Hey guys, Shadow Bloke here, and today I'm going to be ranking the Black Ops 3 multiplayer specialists from worst to best. This will be a very similar format to a top 10 video, except since there are only 9 specialists, it will be more of a top 9. I'm going to be ranking each specialist based on their unique weapons and abilities, my own experiences with them, and whether I would go back and play as them again given the choice. Before I start though, I must stress that my personal preferences and playstyles will factor in to how I rank each character, and as such, this is not to be taken as an official list of who is the worst and who is the best. This is just what I think. But now that's been said, let's get started. Number 9. Nomad. Who needs this appearing? Nomad favours more of a defensive playstyle, and that's really all the good I can say about him. His hive lets you create lethal traps for your enemies, but they take a while to arm, and from my own experiences, they're also very easy to spot unless they're expertly well hidden. Here's how I get kills with the Hive. Step 1. Find an empty room. Step 2. Cover every entrance with Hive traps. Step 3. Fire an unsuppressed weapon wildly into the air, alerting everyone to your location, because there will always be at least one enemy who will run in to investigate, only to find that they're being eaten alive. Despite this, it is still an unreliable weapon. Speaking of unreliability, don't even get me started on Rejack. You'd think being able to revive yourself is pretty cool. Let me show you just how useful it is. Rubbish. Number 8. Battery. One woman fire support team heading out. Now don't get me wrong, I quite like Battery, and ranking her as well as the next five specialists was a tough job, but here we go. Battery is most at home right in the thick of it all, taking on enemies in a full frontal assault. Her war machine is honestly the best grenade launcher I've seen in Call of Duty since the China Lake, and before you say anything, I'ma let you finish, but the China Lake is the greatest grenade launcher of all time. I love that thing. Anyway, the war machine is good for tearing up objectives surrounded by lots of enemies, but it struggles in one-on-one -on -one firefights, because, you know, bullets are generally faster than grenades. It's also kind of awkward to use because the grenades don't explode on impact. Instead, they burst into three smaller grenades, which then explode on impact, and I'd prefer if the war machine just behaved like a regular grenade launcher in that aspect. However, it's not all bad for battery. Her ability, Kinetic Armor, is a seriously strong ability, capable of absorbing damage from a small handful of bullets, thus giving you a huge advantage when fighting one or more enemies by yourself. You are still vulnerable to explosives, headshots, melee damage, and other specialist weapons however. But equip Flak Jacket, then activate Kinetic Armor, and tell me you don't feel like a tank with legs. Number 7. Outrider. Let's go stock me up a kill. Outrider specializes in mid to long range combat, and her weapon and ability helps to accentuate this playstyle. Her Sparrow is a bow that fires explosive arrows, so as if being killed by it in one shot isn't bad enough, you also explode into a fine red paste. Whilst it's excellent for killing enemies at long range, it is still a bow, and as such must be drawn back if you want your arrows to fly further and straighter. The arrows also create a distortion in the air as they fly towards the target, which means that an enemy can easily identify your position if they see an arrow fly past them. And even if the arrow misses your target, the explosion created by each arrow has a very small kill radius, meaning it's not very good for dispatching multiple targets at once. Despite that, I do still have to give the Sparrow points for style. It's definitely one of the cooler specialist weapons out there. Outrider's ability, however, is what really lets her down in my view. Vision Pulse sends out a large radar ping from your location, which highlights detected enemies and allows you to see them through walls. This sounds helpful in practice, and it can be, but enemies can also see your radar ping on their minimap, which will immediately reveal your location. Enemies also don't stay tagged for very long once detected, which can make earning kills with Vision Pulse quite tough in some situations. Here's a pro tip, however, before I move on. Be sure to equip your weapons with FMJ if you're using Vision Pulse, because if you spot an enemy who's only behind one wall, you can use FMJ to shoot them through the wall with deadly accuracy. Number 6. Firebreak. You need a disposal crew? In case you haven't noticed from my channel icon and banner art, I quite like Fire, so why isn't Firebreak any higher up the list? Let me explain. His Purifier is a powerful flamethrower, capable of clearing an entire room full of enemies simply by sweeping the flames from one side of the room to the other. Its power comes from the fact that you only need to graze an enemy with the flames, after that they'll just burn to death. Hot stuff! 
However, it is also a flamethrower, and as such, if you try and use it underwater, it won't work. The purifier also has a pitiful range, and as such can only really be used in close quarters, much like his ability, Heat Wave. Heat Wave creates a short range blast of fire, which destroys enemy equipment and leaves any enemy in range practically immobilized, allowing you to headshot them at your own leisure. As I said though, this ability has a very limited range, making it useful only in close quarters. In short, Firebreak is good at clearing out buildings and contested objectives, and not much else. Number 5. Reaper Thank you for choosing this fine coalescence product. Aside from the fact that he's a robot, which makes him cool by default, Reaper is a strong character who thoroughly deserves a solid position on this list. His specialist weapon is a minigun that transforms from his arm. How cool is that? The Scythe, as it's known, is capable of dealing huge amounts of damage per second with excellent accuracy. Its high rate of fire also makes it a good weapon for suppressing enemies, allowing teammates to circle around and take them out. However, the Scythe does require a bit of time to spin up before it can fire, meaning you'll need to anticipate when an enemy is going to appear in front of you, but a UAV can help eliminate that problem. You also move incredibly slowly when spinning up or firing the Scythe, making it easy for an enemy to flank you. I know I've done that many times against many Reapers. Reaper's ability, Psychosis, is a very strong ability that creates three clones of you that run ahead and are capable of drawing enemy fire. This ability also alters your appearance to make you look like your clones, making this an extremely good choice for more deceptive players. But, kills with Psychosis will not come for free just because you make some dummies of yourself. This ability requires some skill to use, you must be able to blend in with your clones and act as they do in order to successfully capitalise on this ability's power. That means no jumping, no wall running, no sliding, and whatever you do, don't stop believing. Moving. Your clones will always be moving, and if you stop, it becomes pretty obvious which one is you. Number 4. Profit. Augmented for survival. Augmented for victory. Prophet is a surprisingly versatile character who can cater to a wide variety of playstyles. He's also British, so I have to give him points for that. His specialist weapon is the Tempest, or as I like to call it, the Discount Wunderwaffe, because it fires chain lightning, and the lightning bolts have a slightly larger hitbox than a bullet. It's an excellent mid to long range weapon, but because it has to charge up before each shot, it's not terribly effective in close quarters where an enemy is likely to be more accurate. The glitch ability, on the other hand, is what really makes Prophet stand out, because it has so many applications. It can be used as a panic button to quickly escape from a sticky situation. It can be used against an enemy who's chasing you, allowing you to become the chaser. Or, if you want to know what I do to get easy surprise attack medals, listen to this. If an enemy is near or capturing an objective, try throwing an explosive, like a frag or semtex grenade, or firing a rocket, then immediately glitching out of the area when the rocket or grenade starts flying through the air. There'll be just enough time when your explosive of choice goes off for any kills you get to still be valid for a surprise attack medal. The only problem with glitch? Just be mindful of your previous positions. You don't want to glitch into a group of enemies or off the edge of a cliff. Number 3. Seraph They're as good as dead. I love hand cannons, and I love getting lots of score. Seraph takes both of those things and wraps them in a very nice package. Her specialist weapon is the Annihilator, which is as awesome as it sounds. A revolver, which is a one-shot kill at any range, does massive damage to enemy score streaks and has colossal bullet penetration. The downside is that it has a slow rate of fire, so be sure to hit your target with your first shot, otherwise things could get dicey. Fortunately, my affinity for these kinds of weapons means that, that doesn't bother me that much but I've seen plenty of people struggle to hit things with the Annihilator, which demonstrates a level of skill that must be obtained in order to use this weapon effectively. Seraph's ability, Combat Focus, is designed to help you easily achieve high-end score streaks by providing you with a score multiplier that increases the amount of score you earn for a limited time. This ability is best used when playing objectives or destroying enemy score streaks. By playing more conservatively, you maximise the length of time Combat Focus is active, and therefore maximise your score bonus. The only problem with Combat Focus is that compared to other specialist abilities, it takes quite a while to charge, but that's to be expected, considering the potential it has to seriously turn the tide. Number 2. Ruin Enough talk. 
Let's get down range. Fast, ferocious, and a hell of a lot of fun to play as, Ruin is the quintessential army man of Black Ops 3. He favours a very in-your-face rushdown playstyle, and his unique weapon and ability bring out that playstyle in a fantastic way. Ruin's specialist weapon is the gravity spikes. When used, Ruin leaps into the air and slams the spikes down into the ground, creating a tremendous shockwave which kills any enemy within a wide area. The spikes can be activated on the ground or while you're in the air. There's nothing quite like the feeling of power you get when you boost up into the air and slam down onto your enemies with the force of a freight train. And even if you die before you hit the ground, you only lose half of your energy so you can easily recover. It's an excellent way to clear out contested objectives and rooms of enemies, but the shockwave behaves like a large explosion, meaning if an enemy is behind cover or a wall, you won't kill them. Ruin's ability Overdrive effectively doubles your movement speed, allowing you to rush an enemy head-on or outmaneuver them from the sides. Upon activation, you get a burst of speed in the direction you're moving before the ability is properly activated, thus giving you a dodge you can use to avoid enemy fire before running in and finishing them off. Did I say running? I meant sprinting, because as soon as Overdrive activates, you sprint instead of run when you move forward, and you can't go any slower. This means that you need to take extra time to bring up your gun from sprinting whilst Overdrive is active, and that's not always the best thing, because sometimes an enemy can kill you before you get your gun up. This can be counteracted, however, by equipping the Fast Hands and Gung Ho perks, both of which complement sprinting very well. Before I get to the number one slot, however, the only thing that's really stopping Ruin from being number one is that as a character, he is so boring. He only has one win quote. We kicked some serious ass, guys. One loss quote. That sucked. You fibers better step the fuck up. One quote when he gets his gravity spikes, and in terms of backstory, he's not very well developed at all. He is a generic military man, but if you can get over that, he is definitely worth playing if you enjoy being an irrepressible powerhouse. Number one, Spectre. I am no stranger to death. This guy, this guy right here. Spectre flawlessly complements my preferred playstyle. What is my preferred playstyle now that I think about it? Stealth, speed, and surprise. Ah, thank you. As a master assassin, Spectre has access to an array of powerful tools which allow him to decimate the enemy opposition. His specialist weapon, the Ripper, is a wrist-mounted set of blades that dramatically extends your melee range and ups your melee attacks to a one-hit kill. How much range does the Ripper give you on melee attacks? Imagine the melee range that the Commando perk gave you in Modern Warfare 2, then double it. You can also chain your melee attacks to nearby enemies, which allows Spectre to wipe out a group of enemies with lethal precision and speed. To top it all off, the Ripper recharges faster than any other specialist weapon, and you earn more points per kill with it than any other specialist weapon. Normally, you get an extra 25 points for killing an enemy with a specialist weapon. With the Ripper, you get an extra 50. The obvious drawback with the Ripper is you can only use it just outside of normal melee range, and enemies can still kill you whilst you're lunging towards them, but the speed at which it recharges means even if you only get one kill with it before you die, you can rack up a lot of kills with it in a single game. Spectre's ability, Active Camo, gives you a brief period of invisibility, which, unlike the Exo Cloak in Advanced Warfare, is actually really good. The level of invisibility is so strong that in the past I've had several enemies run straight past me without even knowing that I was there, which gives this ability many different applications. If you're going short range, you can use it to get right up close to an enemy before landing the killing blow. If you're going long range, you can use it to conceal your position from an enemy sniper before sniping them yourself. You can use it to flank a group of enemies and set up for some impressive multi-kills. And you can use it to capture objectives right under the enemy's noses. An example of this was when I was playing Uplink one day. I used active camo before I picked up the satellite drone and was able to carry it into the enemy's goal without them having a clue as to where I was. It is a seriously strong ability, but it has its faults. Active Camo has an extremely long recharge time, and only lasts for about 4 seconds, so it must be used sparingly. The camouflage also doesn't activate immediately, and there is a brief transition period between being visible and invisible when the ability is activated, which means you'll want to use it before you start meeting any enemies, so that when you see an enemy, they won't see you. As a final note on Spectre, I have to say that he is an incredibly cool character. 
a top secret spec ops assassin shrouded in secrecy and mystery. No one knows who he is, who he works for, or if he's even a guy. One thing is certain, however, Spectre's skill is unmatched and he projects a distinctly ominous aura. For me, Spectre is death incarnate, and that's why he is my number one specialist. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'd be lying if I said this hasn't taken me much effort, and if I can ask you to do one thing, I want you to comment who your favourite specialist is and why. I'm really interested to see what you guys have to say, as I always am. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys later.